Hi everyone! Uh, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Normally, I wouldn't record this so soon after the last one, but uh, today is Labor Day. Enjoy 10 extra adventures today, courtesy of Manuel Labor. Um, so it's, it's rollover. I just uh, did the last couple episodes. Wow. All oh, right, the diet pills. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Weird. Okay. Um. Today, the kingdom celebrates the achievements of union boss Manuel Labor, who successfully lobbied the various industries of loading for longer hours and shorter breaks. After successfully lengthening the workday and the work week, and negotiating less vacation time, Labor was dragged to the streets and hung, drawn, painted, messily sketched, quartered, ate, fed to wolves, and given an atomic wedgie by outraged laborers. Everyone works just a little harder today to celebrate his demise, but not too much harder, of course. Fantastic. Outstanding. Hmm, I see that my uh, audio keeps peaking. I hope the recording is okay. I think it should be good, though. I mean, I could check. But that would imply that, you know. Let's go to the Defiled Alcove. Actually, considering that I'm going to have to grind anyway, I may as well just... Do a little more grinding off screen, and that'll let me check the recording as well. So I'll be right back. But let it be known that I'm going to grind in here until progress is made. Hey, I'm back. And it looks like the audio is still peaking. Hmm. Maybe if I get closer, it'll sound good, or... This is rather annoying, though. Hold on. How about now? Well, I suppose I'll have to read things and then watch my waveform. But uh, I found this in the dusty, in the dusty corner of the defiled nook. You find three smaller nooks in the wall, each containing a skull. You never want to pass up an opportunity to disturb some remains. You prefer to hop in action. See what's underneath the third one. You look under the third skull and a find a rusty bud's bone saw. I guess that explains how it got separated from the rest of its skeleton. This is the type of saw used by doctors to cut bones during surgery. Here's an interesting piece of trivia. Do you know why people sometimes refer to doctors as sawbones? It's because the first person to ever practice medicine was named Rusty Sawbones. Isn't that fascinating? And the uh, item description is that it saws bones. You're finding a party skeleton. I think I read this guy's... Yeah, because he gave me loose teeth. Toothy skeleton. Loose teeth and evil eye. The evil eye. The sinister eyeball somehow makes manages to emit a black glow. It'd make your Zeppelin posters look pretty sweet. <laughs> Alright, um, so I've got all these. I don't think I've been here on the camera yet. You're fighting a senile lech. Some necromancers, in a desperate final bid for immortality, perform dire rituals to become lichis. This one did it by accident while trying to make some breakfast. It gets the jump on you. It flies towards you, then forgets where you are. It looks frantically around for you, even though you're standing directly in front of it. Maybe it's mistaken you for a tombstone. Slightly less evil. You're finding a basic lich. In life, this necromancer had a predilection for yoga pants and pumpkin spice when seasonally appropriate. In Undeath, it started a murderous rage. One thing that hasn't changed, though, is its secret alcoholism. All right. All right. In this, in a section, in a wall of this section of the defiled niche, you find three smaller niches. Each of these contains an even smaller niche, which in turn contains an urn. The urns are basically identical. You feel like messing with them? See what's behind urn number three. As you pick up the urn to look behind it, you hear a click. Apparently it was sitting on some kind of switch. 
a sequence of eight tinny sounding bells plays on a panel somewhere on the opposite wall, revealing a treasure chest. You open the chest and surprise, it's full of meat. All right. The second one. Oh, right. I already did some of these. Whoops. You're finding a slick lick. This lick is like much other is much like other licks, only a lot smoother. Ooh yeah. We got a lick eye. You're finding a dirty old lick. All licks are evil, there's no doubt about that. But this one, even before he entered this terrible state of semi undeath, was the kind of guy that Jethro Toll used to sing about. He tries to hit on you, but his pickup lines are decades out of date. Alright. You shudder as the dirty old lich breathes his last. Wait, do lichs breathe? Anyway, your evilometer beeps three times. Cool. Well, let's take a look at it. Alco Cranny. Cranny's empty. Alcove is okay. Niche is pretty empty, and Nook is full. Alright, cool. <laughs> You're finding a basic lick. It shrieks at you in an ancient forbidden tongue. Hashtag cursed. Boxed wine. Dirty old lick. All right. Let's go look around the alcove. Have I been here? I think I have, because I remember reading the Grave Robbers movie. Or Rover. Yeah. I've been here, right? I can hear my cat going nuts in the distance. I'm also going to check on my audio again, so I'll be right back. All right, I think I figured it out. Um, I restarted OBS, and I think that'll probably help. As you reach for the first skull to move out of the way, it says, Hey, watch it. Wow, you can talk, you reply. Hell yeah, I can talk. And boy, can it. You spend the next 15 minutes learning the filthiest jokes you've ever heard. You manage to memorize a couple of them for later use. We gained 51 sarcasm. All right. Slightly less evil. <laughs> it impales you with eight canines and six bicuspids. What time is it? 2.30. We got the evil eye. What does the evil eye do? Let me check. Let me see here. We've got lick eye. It's the eye from a lick. It's funny because you can't ever remember having the lick actually having eyes while you're fighting it. A pile of dusty animal bones. It's a pile of bones from an animal skeleton. Oh, what do I do with those? I remember that I had stuff for them. We've got a bunch of dead guys watch. More adventures per day. Evil eye. You take the eye into the center of the defiled nook, where all evil skeletons can see it, and them, presumably, and make a big show of stomping and flat. Your evil ometer emits three quick beeps as the level of evil diminishes. Oh, interesting. Let's take a look at the evil ometer. 42, 26, 40. Okay. 42, 26, 37. Okay, so it's just the nook, but that's okay. That's pretty good, actually. Oh, also, um, I went around and grinded in the... Uh, conservatory at spooky raven manor for dakota fanning um which means i'm only missing this now actually oh i think that's new the enormous greater than sign you're fighting a lowercase h you descend the slant of the greater than sign and encounter a lowercase h it hobbles toward you on its stubby legs with malice in its straight top part it bangs into your leg causing you hurt with a capital h we got a percent sign all right, interesting. You're finding a swarm of lowercase a's. You descend the slant of the greater than sign and encounter a flying, buzzing swarm of lowercase a's. They notice you and descend on you in a frenzy. One of the a's flies directly into your eye. You lose 12 hit points. That's funny. All right, so they're actually able to do damage with me. To me, that is. But not too much, since I'm still pretty overleveled. It's really hard to not overlevel in this game since you just always get stat bonuses. Uh, you descend the slant of the greater than sign. 
and find yourself in a crowded room filled with all manner of alphanumeric characters and punctuation marks, which you'd like to investigate. Uh, let's go to the little E. You approach the lowercase e. You stare at it for a while and find yourself unable to move. You sit there for four hours completely paralyzed. You use the opportunity to med meditate. We gain a mysteriousness and a mus muscle point. Back to the H. What? My, uh, my iPad just turned on to activate Siri. Go to fucking hell. I hope Steve Jobs is being kicked by Satan in hell right now. For this and other things. Anyway, as you approach the queue, it touches you with its insert the name of whatever you call the straight part of a capital Q here, and disappears. You notice the scenery begin to change at random. We acquire effect teleportitis. For some reason, you keep randomly teleporting from place to place. It's kind of annoying. Your position seems uncertain. Um, okay. Uppercase Q. You descend and approach the slant of the greater than sign and encounter an uppercase Q. It slowly swivels toward you and as it hears you approach. It leaps into you again, spinning around you like a hula hoop, except most hula hoops don't have sharp little knobs in them that repeatedly gouges your flesh. Most hula hoops, at least. Ooh, critical hit. We got a right parenthesis. We're fighting a knob goblin sous chef. You went to the kitchens and are accosted by one of the low-level knob chefs. Heard about these guys. They look harmless, but me wield a mean ladle. Got a wad of dough. <laughs> knob goblin mad scientist. This is a mad scientist. Not mad as in, check out my mad skills. Mad as in, I wonder if I can genetically engineer a creature that has nipples for eyes. Probably could if you were flirt if you were dealing with fruit flies. Finding a bean bat. All right, we're in the bean cave. A skeletal hamster. When you enter the haunted conservatory, the first thing that jumps out at you is a tiny fenced-in cemetery that appears to be the resting place of a long line of spooky raven family pets. When you get there in the cemetery, the first thing that jumps out of you is a reanimated skeleton of a hamster. Yikes. And a man-eating plant. Is that? Okay, teleportitis is done now. That's, uh, hmm. Weird. Actually, we can probably go here now. You're fighting a dodecapede. In chamber one of the daily dungeon, you encounter a monster. It's far... This room is guarded by a fierce dodecapede. It's like a centipede, but it only has 12 legs. You jump him. We got a clutch of dodecapede legs. I want to be a door. Uh, let's bash it down. Okay, so we walked out. Damn. You accidentally step on a hidden pressure plate, and the entire floor slides back to reveal an enormous electric stove burner. You dart to the opposite door, but not before burning your feet pretty bad. Could have been worse, though. You're proud of yourself for remembering to protect yourself from the heat. All right, that isn't so bad. That's only like half our health. We can bash it down. Uh, let's open the chest. Oh, it wasn't a mimic. You're fighting a dairy ooze. In chamber six of the gar daily dungeon, you encounter a monster. This room is guarded by an unusually aggressive milky discharge. Trust me, it's as nasty as it sounds. We got mana curds. Okay, uh, let's take a look at them. These are like regular cheese curds, except they use, instead of milk, they use space, and instead of rennet, they use thyme, which is good because if you think about it, rennet's freaking gross. It is. We got a jug o magicalness. This jug contains a liquid, the liquid contains magicalness. We got nine enchantedness. All right. I'm okay with that. You're fighting apathetic lizardmen in chamber seven of the daily dungeon. You encounter a monster. This room is guarded by an apathetic lizardman. Well, not really guarded. Uh, sort of guarded. I don't care. All right. We got hitting the lizardmen makes you feel sort of, eh, whatever. We got apathy. You just don't care. All attributes minus 30%. Whoa. Oh, it just made my muscle normal. 
because they have so many stacks on it. To punish prisoners in water, they feed them nothing but bread and water. This is like bread and water mixed up in a bowl. Flavorless gruel. Uh, I guess I'll bash it down, right? Yeah, cool. Let's go forward cautiously. You step on a rigged brick on the floor, causing a panel in <laughs> the ceiling to slide open and dump an entire room full of niche adult magazines on you. You pick through them, seeing things you did not want to see. You lose 55 hit points. You're, could have been worse. You're proud of yourself to remember to protect yourself from the sleaze. Nice. The adventure again. Let's open it. Can of maces. It's a one-handed club. It gives you sleaze res- Oh, hold on. This might actually be good. Okay, the flipper is 1 to 16. And then... The can of maces is a ranged weapon that's also a one-handed club. Weird. It gives me plus two weapon damage and sleaze resistance. The flipper is just really badass, though, honestly. Yeah, I really can't match the flipper in any way. It's too powerful. All right. Bash it down. Let's keep on going. More sleaze damage. A pencil golem. In chamber 13, you encounter a monster. This room is guarded by a golem made of pencils. It's pointy. The golem, that is, not the room. Flip him. You got a pencil stub. All right. You jab yourself in one of its sharp bits. Ow. You got a pencil stub. Nice. Hold on. Let me go to my skills. Let's hibernate for an adventure. Nice. Skull the Auk. Blubber up. Tongue of the Walrus. Seal clubbing frenzy. And then I just got to waste my remaining turns of apathy. Oh, the orc has them opened up. Nice. All right. I'm trying to figure out how to get this needle. It's kind of not working out for me. As you cross the room, the trap door opens in the ceiling and a f- giant floating spooky skull descends, making ooh, ooh, noises you shudder as you shoulder past it could have been worse in the 15th and final chamber of the daily dungeon you find a splendorous chest splendorous is your favorite final is your favorite kind of chest we got a fat loot token okay now we can get boris's ring plus 10 muscle sneaky pete's breath spray a sewing kit a dried gelatinous cube. Huh. Wait, actually, what if we get one of these? Okay. We can go here. Behind the gate of Boris, you find a statue of Mor- Boris. Mightiest of the warriors of war, loathing in the times of old. Base of the statue, there's a slot. A, sl- a sign above the slot says, insert meat to continue. Not enough meat to make a proper offering. Um, then you know what? I can come back here later. Um, hmm. 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 Let me see here. Actually, let's just waste this last, like, blep of uh, apathy. Sorry. Anyway, let's do it by resting, because then that'll get me stats. And now, I just remembered that I can fight the seals now. Figure of an armored seal. You place the figurine at your feet and position 10 seal blubber candles on the ground around it. Shit, man. That's a lot of seal blubber. 
A cold and shadow gather around you, and time seems to slow to a crawl. Echoes of your northern ancestry rise up from the depths of your consciousness, whispering words in the forgotten tongue of your forefathers. Your clubbing muscles begin to twitch with anticipation. Let's begin the ritual. You're fighting a centurion of Sparky. You light the candles and speak the ancient words. A wave of intense heat washes over you as a circular wall of flame springs into being around you. There's a sizzling sound, a smell of burning fat, as an, impos an imposing seal waddles forth from the curtain of flame. The seal is a centurion of the army of Emperor Sparky, dread overlord of the Abyssal Forge. Sparky is responsible for outfitting the armies of the Seven Seals with weapons and armor, and none receive more care than in his own centurions. He beats his sor short sword against his shield and glowers at you. Let's not waste any time, and... I don't have any fury. Thrust smack him. Oh, woof. He guts you with a short sword. It hurts, but you know what they say. No guts, no glory. And you lose 101 hit points. Holy shit. Whoa. That was... Ridiculous. <laughs> um... Yikes. Yowza. That was, uh, that was extreme. All right, I need a thousand dollars worth of candles. Thank you. Sure, why not? If you're going to be like that, you know? Okay. You know, now would actually be a good time to drink my seal blood. Since I'm particularly weak after that. Let's pop one of these. Right, my seal blood is where? Hmm. Oh, here we go. Tainted seal's blood. You drink the tainted seal's blood. It tastes salty and evil. You gain the effect. Corruption of wretched Wally. Mixed in with your blood is a small quantity of the blood from a seal of wretched Wally's brood. It's weird that blood and brood don't rhyme, don't you think? Anyway, this corruption in your blood manifests in a variety of useful ways. You're extra strong, your body's natural healing is enhanced, and you're covered with a bunch of sharp and evil-looking barbs. We get more muscle, more weapon damage, and we regenerate more health, which is all things that I want. What does this do? Okay, well, I guess I'll do that later. Hmm. So what can we even... Oh, we can go here. Cobnoblab. Yeah. You're fighting a knob goblin alchemist. This is one of the most mad of the knob goblin mad scientists. He spent most of his life in futile pursuit of a formula to turn lead into meat, but the most he could muster was turning cardboard into tofu, and no one could tell the difference. After so many failures, he devoted the remainder of his life to the pursuit of combining chemicals and magical annotations to make smoke bubbles and pretty colors in beakers, and that's been a lot more easier and rewarding. Cool, we bonk him. He gets he tosses a potion at you. It tastes a little like grapes and a little like gravy. We got a half baked potion. Alchemy is a process, you know? And in this particular case, it's a process that got interrupted. We get the effect triple question mark. I think I've read this guy's description. We got a scrumptious reagent. Hmm. Hmm. What happened? A drunk goat appeared? <laughs> hey, you. Yeah, you with the... 
face. I just wanted you to know that I love you and you're my best friend. Wait, no, I wanted to say that if you got the cash and the incl- <laughs> incl- <laughs> inclination, you should give us money to help Kingdom of Loathing stay lion free. Uh, check out what's available in Mr. Store this month, the Guzzler application. Join the gig economy by delivering booze to strangers in exchange for fake money. So Mr. Store is the online stuff. Um, you know, if you buy if you buy things in there, you'll get unique items. Some of them are pretty busted. I don't know why this popped up. Um, I'm not mad about it. Like, this is a game that does not have ads in it. It's entirely, like, donator-supported. Like, I'm totally fine with that, you know? And by all means, everyone go donate to KOL. They are good. He splashes you with the contents of a beaker. Fortunately, it's just his moaning coffee and not some solution that <laughs> turns you into a tentacle beast. He charges at you and you say, mad, we're all mad here. I'm mad, you're mad, and continue until he falls asleep. Nice. We got Knob Goblin Super Seltzer. This is an extremely fizzy be- beverage concocted by the Knob Goblin Mad Scientist. If there were some sort of clown-themed superhero in the kingdom, he would use this to fight crime, but there isn't. Super Seltzer will restore a large number of MP when drunk. Interesting. Yeah, it's like 25 MP. That's pretty good. Well, let's look around somewhere else. To the menagerie. Oh, God, I was fighting in the wrong area. You're fighting a spectral jellyfish. Ooh. This is the enslaved spirit of a jellyfish that didn't quite make it to jellyfish heaven. Where jellyfish go to get away from Mormons and drunk Eskimo. You get to jump on it. <laughs> You're fighting a booze giant. This is a booze giant who is somehow captured by the fluffy cloud kingdom from the fluffy cloud kingdom by the Nam Goblin mad scientist. He puts his arm around you and says, I love you, man. You're my best friend. Unfortunately, since he's a giant, the hug almost squeezes your head off. We bonk him, though. Uh, he smacks you upside the head with a bottle of whiskey. An empty bottle. (laughs) All right. We got a bottle of whiskey. Cool. You're fighting a portly abomination. This is a gigantic creature that has been constructed by the Knob Goblin mad scientist out of parts of dead fat goblins. He knees you with his doughy knee. (laughs) Hell yeah. Another spectral jellyfish. Bonk. Portly abomination. Whoa, new damage record. Holy moly. I'm starting to break the 200 on a damage. Let's go back to the menagerie and let's go to level two. You're fighting a carnivorous moxie weed. This is a giant moxie weed, which has via genetic manipulation by knob goblin mad scientist, uh, developed a tendency to move around and eat people. It gets the jump on you. It's so moxious. It convinces you to smack yourself. These 14 hit points, but we got moxie weed when we killed it. That's cool. You're fighting a grass elemental. This is a pile of glass grass cr- cl- glass crippings <clears throat> grass clippings that has somehow gained sentience and isn't particularly happy about being cut down in the primes of its many tiny lives. You get the jump on it. Cool. You're fighting a were moose. This is a were moose, one of the most terrifying and Canadian of all the members of the lycanthrope family, eh? Get the jump on him. My wife speaking over my shoulder. Love you too, sweetie. Shout out to the were moose, yo. Another moxie weed. And a giant moxie weed. Ooh. Oh, damn. I didn't read that. I should have. It made me sneeze. You hit him on the head. Wait, no. He hit you on the head. What a naughty moose. You lose 12 hit points. You know, I love doing LPs, Let's Plays, that is to say, because they let you know that you really don't have that much to talk about. It starts to attack, but starts to turn brown around the edges and has to go sit under a sprinkler for a bit. Did I mention there's a sprinkler in this room? There totally is. It's right over there. Grass Elemental. Jump him. Let's head back to here. (laughs) The Basic Elemental. Actually, wait. Let's go to 37. Let's see what he wants. Did you find that file yet? Uh, no, still working on that. 
Well, no pressure or anything. I'd like to know what sort of horrible torture I'm about to be subjected to, you know? I'll get right on it. The fruit golem. Hmm. I wonder if there's something that I can do. It whips you with several leafy tentacles while biting you with its leafy fangs. Surprisingly, leafy fangs can do some serious damage. Cool. The Hormos. The booze giant. None of the one of these. He spills some overproof rum on you and lights you on fire. <laughs> All right, rad. He breaks the neck off of a bottle and attacks you with it. Oh, wait. Looks like he broke the neck off a bottle by accident and is weeping about the loss of booze. Fumble. Nice. We got a bottle of gin. We got the portly abomination. We got abominable blubber. You got a wobble blubber, blubber from a portly abomination. Specifically, it came from the creature's gut. It sounds gross, but I have to tell you, this slippery fat is pretty terrific stuff. It's phenomenal, abominable, abdominal blubber. <laughs> phenomenal, abdominable, <laughs> phenomenal, abominable, abdominal blubber. More combat initiative and sleaze resistance. All right. Actually, um, while I'm here. Oh, right. I'm fighting you. Boop. Let's um let's buff myself up again. See the clubbing frenzy. Tongue of the walrus. Blubber up. And scowl of the ock. I still got all my fury. Cause I really, really want to kill the armored seal. Begin the ritual. Alright. And let's wallop him. Oh boy. You hit him for 51 plus 8 damage, critical hit. You watch as Glee. Well, you watch with Glee as Desmond extracts one drop of blood from your enemy. Then you listen with barely concealed horror as he squirts the blood into your ear. He headbutts you with his hard iron helmet. The Iron Age must have sucked. At least for people getting hit in the head. Hmm. If I heal, I don't know if that'll actually do anything damn he bonked me jeez all right well i suppose that's uh the end of it nah that's a pretty lame adventure or uh ending at least i can go back here oh damn it i'm a fool i'm a fool Uh, oh, we could go to Mount McLarge Huge, the Temple of Literacy. Oh, right, never mind. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Think, think, think. Actually, I can just pop off here. Odd jobs board. Just grow myself up some cash. You know, it regenerates some help. You lift that bar, you tote that bale, and you do it again, and you rest. Cool. All right. And then let's just get some sip going on. Six adventures, two drunkenness. Martini? Three drunkenness. Perfect. All right. We've got 15 adventures to end the episode with. Um, We could go to... Hmm. We could try finishing out the curbed. <laughs> All right. You're fighting a gargantua lich. This lich is friggin' huge. A spooky aura emanates from the uh, place where its body would be if it had a body. Interesting. Ooh. It can actually do damage. That's not great. It stares deep into your soul with its spooky, empty eyes. You die a little inside. You lose 16 hit points. Uh-oh. All right. Let's bonk him. As the lich gargantua lich fades into nothingness, your evilometer emits a single loud beep. Uh, let's take a look at that. Whoa. Yeah, those two are empty. Cool. So we're actually uh, emptying it out pretty decently. 
turn your head and coffin. Ooh, nice. You come to a corner of a defiled alcove where three coffins have been carelessly pushed against a wall. One is an ornate, drool-encrusted mahogany affair. The second is a cheap, simple-looking pine box. And the third is a garden-variety coffin. Which is to say it's a garden that's already been watered. Which is to say it's wet. Each of the coffins have already been broken into, so there's no harm in checking them out. Let's go to the fancy one. You open the fancy coffin and find it to be empty. There's not even a pillow inside. <laughs> the thought of it fills you with rage, and you pound the coffin to powder with your bare hands. And then you calm down and leave. <laughs> Gain 52 strength. <laughs> Radical. Uh, I wish there was something I could do with all of these loose teeth that I have. Corpulence Moby. Lots of loose teeth and cranberries. Okay, let's check out the pine box. You open the box and find a huge stack of meat. You're confused for a while, but then you remember seeing something in a paper about a notorious thief who's been active in the kingdom lately, who steals from the graves of the rich and puts his loot in the graves of the poor. Interesting. We got a coffin lid. What is a coffin lid? Spook resistance, and it's a shield for three with gives three damage reduction. This is the lid of a coffin. One side is covered with dirt, and the other side is covered in scratches. From this, you conclude that someone must have really wanted to get their hands on the dirt that was inside this coffin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Grave robbers, Moby. We fumbled. It tries to knock you into a grave, but gravely miscalculates the angle to do so. Desmond gained a pound. All right, good boy. You're fighting a modern Zmobi. <laughs> As you're darting from place to place in the alcove like some kind of grave robbing cheetah, you encounter something moving even faster than you. It's a Zmobi, but it's not your grandfather's Zmobi. George Romero is your grandfather, right? It's one of those newfangled, fat, super fast Zmobis. <laughs> and man does not have a mean look on its face. It stops to tie its running shoes. All right. You sigh with a relief as the especially evil Zmobi grunts his last. Evil Abner emits five quick beeps. Yo! Let's take a look. Yeah, nice. All right. We're working through it. Um... So before I go, I'm pretty empty, but before I go, let's, hmm, let's use a cute baby seal one. You place the figure in your feet and position five seal bubber candles on the ground around it. Begin the ritual. All right. Ooh. It giggles, and the high-pitched pa sound penetrates you to your very soul. It hurts. Let's wallop him. All right. We got another severed flipper. And it is... Okay, so it's just identical. But it, it's the same item. That makes sense. Cool. Much better. Okay, so now uh, we can fight the broodling seals with pretty much impunity. Um, we can, all right, we are still working through Spooky Raven Manor. We got these. We haven't started either of these. We need to work on this. We're getting a lot through this and we need to find a clown disguise now. But other than that, that was a pretty good episode. Uh, I can't wait to record the next one, but I can't. So until then, see you guys later. I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming. This has been Kitty Loathing. Stay curious. This is more of an audio test than actual gameplay recording. Subject 37 wants to investigate the Cobb Knob laboratories and find out what they're planning. Go to the trapper on Mount McLarge Huge. Yada yada yada. Bloody dee da da da.